I keep seeing these articles about the link between Wall Street and crypto prices, like institutions entering crypto. Yeah, I think that's really big for adoption. Like for example, I keep trying to get my dad to invest in Bitcoin and he won't because he's like, uh, what I see on TV or what the banks are saying or just a kind of older generation, they're a bit put off no, by the that. the experts. Yeah, they're the experts, but they're not really. So actually like my dad's missing out on an opportunity. What's the percentage of people who are like in traditional finance who are very into crypto and the ones who are not and why either, right? Well, there's no one message that comes out of all of the banks. You know, everybody has a different take on crypto and Wall Street. I think it'd be really interesting to go down to somewhere like Wall Street or an investment bank, try to talk to somebody and be like, what is your stance on crypto? To be fair, you don't really need to go somewhere like Wall Street. You could go to Wall Street. Today, we're in Wall Street, the center of American capitalism. We're asking the hard-hitting questions, the questions everyone wants to know the answer to. Uh, excuse me, ladies, do you guys work here in uh, Wall Street? No, no. All right, fantastic. What do you guys think of crypto? I don't, well, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure about that. And in Spain, um, cryptos are for people who doesn't know anything about exchange and they go to like clubs and they buy things with money but they don't really know what they are buying. So I don't think that the lack of information is a barrier because people is attracted by the lack of information. Okay, and what brought you here to the financial district? Uh, we love the, the move of Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> so that's actually why we're here. No, you own no. any stock? No. No? no. Any no. crypto? Actually, I'm mining P. I don't know if you know that. You're what? P. Poi. P. I. PI? Yeah. yeah. You're a PI? Uh, yeah. Amazing. And uh, what's the process of mining like? Um, just put on a button and it's going, <laughs> going mining. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, so we are now a little bit off Wall Street. We went to a different area and there are a few more banks around here. We're going to see if there's anybody, maybe we'll be able to talk to this guy. If there's anybody, we can just ask a couple questions. Excuse me? Um, my name's at PNC. What do you think the, the other people at your company think overall about crypto? I don't know, it's a pretty big company, like a ton of people there, but I mean, yeah, like a couple people on my team are pretty into it, I would say. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but yeah, people people are pretty into it. People, there's money to be made, right? I'm I work at PNC. Do you have any interest in crypto? Personally, a little bit. I've been hearing a little bit of buzz within uh, my friend circles and everything. So the, the people at the bank have right, a little right, bit of interest? Right, a little bit, a little bit of buzz, a little bit of traction. Not much more than that, no, no like offerings? Nothing major in terms of institutional investing or anything that I've kind of heard. As we leave Wall Street, we came to the realization that anyone working at a big bank or institutions are, at best, hesitant to talk with us. We still haven't found our answer, but we decided to sit down with a business development manager at Bybit to get more insight. My name is Vasco. I work for Bybit since 2018 as a business development manager. So back in 2018, when I first bought Bitcoin, I was considered a fool. Very, very few people had any idea of what it was. It was, again, just like a sort of a gamble. And now it's completely different. Everybody knows Bitcoin. More and more people know about, you know, NFTs brought a lot of people to the to the industry as well. I recently watched uh, Michael Saylor on Up Only. He was making a good point saying that most uh, institutions only invest for the most part in Bitcoin and Ethereum only because of regulatory issues. It's uh, it's just a gray area for them to operate in. So they, they don't wanna be caught doing something that's not necessarily regulated. Uh, they cannot take those risks. As we dig a bit further, these two news interviews can get you a better sense of what some of the top minds in both traditional finance and crypto see where the space is going. The pandemic, quite frankly, was a catalyst for institutional adoption and specifically Bitcoin and the, the narrative or use case around digital gold, particularly an environment where we've seen unprecedented monetary and fiscal stimulus from central banks and governments um, in response to the pandemic. And my simplistic math was was 2,000 people work for a year to make 100 million bucks, and then we lose it all because of inflation, which meant that if we work forever, we get nowhere. The, uh, the impact of interest rates on what was traditionally the 40% in a 60-40 portfolio, and the fact that um, there really aren't a lot of good options for folks to generate returns or yield in that traditional construct, I think that's also captured a lot of a lot of interest from investors. The big observation is that most balance sheets of corporations are composed of cash and credit, and I would say they're crumbling cash and credit. So I definitely know for sure what we learned this week. Just for like other people who might be watching, like what did we 
learn. I know. But I think some of the big takeaways are the big companies like Grayscale, MicroStrategy, and Fidelity that are currently offering crypto as an investment are very public about it. The companies and funds that aren't offering crypto as an investment just yet are keeping everything on the down low and under lock and key until they fully flush that out and release them. The biggest barrier to entry at the moment is gonna be regulation. Okay, so in normal people English, they're keeping it secret because they don't want their strategies to be known. What do you think that means for the average person who holds some crypto? How do you think it'll impact the people? Well, it's just gonna give people more options. So whenever people are looking to invest for their retirement or invest in a mutual fund, invest in a basket of goods or an array of goods, they'll be able to include cryptocurrency in their investments. Got it. Like I said, I, I mean, I didn't get it. I already got it before because I knew it. Um, I knew it.